Intel's GPU has been benchmarked and actually looks pretty good. What doesn't look good is Ubisoft and their NFTs. <laughs> And the Steam Deck might not be the only handheld console I want to get my hands on. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Brett. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And we're going to start off with some benchmarks that are coming up about the next generation Intel DG2 GPU that we're expected to get announced sometime soon and launch sometime soon as well. I believe Intel's official announcement was Q1 of 2022 is when we're expecting to hear more about the Arc Alchemist GPUs. But benchmarks coming out of Ashes of the Singularity provide us with at least a glimmer of hope at the fact that it might not be altogether terrible. With the preset of medium at 1080p, it looks like it ran at about 126.9 FPS. And if you compare that to other GPUs, such as the RTX 3090, that can go from around 150 FPS. So it's roughly 10 to 15% slower than the RTX 3090, according to this one specific benchmark of a game very few people play. I mean, mostly in the tech community, it was used to benchmark DX12 because it was like one of the very first DX12 games. But then people who are playing, there's other RTS games out there that you could play that would give you more status. Anyways, this is not a critique of Ashes of the Singularity, but it is to show that this doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot besides the fact that at least according to preliminary results, this thing is actually all right. It's like in the RTX 30 series upper echelon of GPUs and based on other speculation that Tom's Hardware has been hearing, which I actually haven't heard up until this point, but they say in their article is that the launch price could be around $599 with 16 gigabytes of VRAM and 512 execution units. That's something I'm questioning, but if we could get RTX 3080 level performance at $599, that's $200 less than the RTX 3080, if it can actually have some sort of stock somehow for whatever reason, if they can produce a lot more than people want, maybe Maybe people are hesitant to jump into the new Intel GPU thing because it's a new player or because they got massive allocation of stock from TSMC to produce the G GPUs. I don't know, but it could potentially be a good future in case you want to switch over to Team Blue. That might happen. What do you think of the Intel GPU and its benchmarks? Let me know down below in those comments. And I'm going to let you know more about Intel stuff. We've got some leaked information about their upcoming non-K series CPUs. In fact, somebody in Peru was able to buy one and unboxed it for us. Here's the new CPU cooler that should be coming out from Intel with the Core i5-12400F being pictured here. And Best Buy releasing pricing on the upcoming non-K series CPUs in case you're wanting to know what you can actually afford. Don't necessarily take this leak as 100%. You have to kind of contextualize a few things, which these websites have done. If you look at the actual Best Buy like leak, it says that the i9-12900 is going for 220 and for 240 and then also 360, which obviously not all of those can be true, but if we look at video cards, they're showcasing here that the 12900 will be $529.99. And then if we go further down the line, the 12100F for 110, the 12100 for 140, the 12400F for 180, which if their performance is anything like we're expecting, this would mean that the Intel's really competitive at the low end and AMD really doesn't have anything to compete, especially with anything in the 12400 and below. I mean, AMD's cheapest CPU right now is 259 in the 50 6600G, which the 12600K actually does really well against. And then if the 12400F is like within 10, 20% of the 12600K, then it's just going to be a no brainer at $180. If indeed that is the price, according to these leaked spec lists. Are you waiting for Alder Lake and the non K series CPUs? Are you going to upgrade to them with the DDR4 platform? Obviously, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, at least in my opinion, to get something like the i3 12100 and then slap in DDR5 RAM. But to each is I guess if you want to do that, you could potentially do that. But let me know your upgrade intentions down below in the comments. And I'm going to let you know where you can find the hottest tech deals on the internet. It's UFD deals, my friends. Okay. You want to find out what PC parts are on sale, where you're going to be able to buy stuff. All right. UFD deals is here. And I'm here to present you the hottest tech deals that are out there right now. Samsung has their 49 inch Odyssey G9 Super Ultra Wide, 240 hertz, 5120 by 1440p resolution. It's essentially two 27 inch 1440p monitors side by side at two 
240 hertz on sale right now for a thousand dollars. That's its Black Friday price right there. That is a solid deal. Elgato has their Wave One microphone, which is one of the most highly regarded USB condenser microphones out there. It's only eighty dollars right now over on Amazon, savings of twenty bucks. And then in case you're looking for a cheap NVMe M.2 SSD, you don't need the fastest one out there, but you're really looking for capacity. This Kingston NV1 two terabyte is only going for $155. Now be warned, it's not the fastest. It's 2,100 megabytes per second read and 1,700 megabytes per second write, which is not blisteringly fast even for PCI Express 3.0, but for capacity, 155 bucks. That's a good deal. And some people think crypto is a good deal. So let's get into the crypto stunks price and Bitcoin up 3.8% today to be at 48,460. Recovering from its little weekend slump that it had, Ethereum also up 3% to be at just below $4,000. Dogecoin also up 1% to sit at 16.9 cents. Meme stocks doing all right as well. GameStop up a quarter of a percent to be at 157.51. AMC continuing its upward trajectory to be up 3% to be over $30. Obviously since Friday, Spider-Man No Way Home, I think it was reported, came in at $600 million, not in the domestic box office, but global box office. Since its launch, it's proving to be uh, the return to form for movie theaters, and that does seem to be bolstering AMC stock price. But nothing can bolster the meme craze of NFTs because it's already so gosh dang high unless you're Ubisoft and you try to implement NFTs into your games and you make it so that people have to play for 600 hours to get some of these for free. Really weird, not a whole lot of people wanting to achieve this, but if we look on the platform that they're being actually resold on in order for Ubisoft to make any sort of money on it, it doesn't look like things are going that swimmingly for them. Somebody did a research on this and it appears that they have had just 15 sales in total, which Ubisoft, of that cut of the 15 sales, they've made $400. $396.43 is the official price of the NFTs that have been resold on third-party websites. But to make things even worse, in order for them to mint all of these 2,200 NFTs, the fees associated with that, the gas fees or blockchain fees, whatever you want to call it, appears to have been roughly $700. So right now, obviously, we're still in the early phases of Ubisoft's Quartz project, but they are in the hole about $300 on this NFT thing, not to mention the designing implementation, all of the, you know, salaries that they have to pay of people who actually made this kind of stuff. It doesn't seem like it's going all that swimming for Ubisoft, but as I mentioned, we're in the nascent stages of game developers implementing NFTs into their games, but I just, number one, I don't see a financial incentive for game developers to really do this, and then if there is one, it probably comes at the cost of consumers having the financial incentive to do this, and then why would they decentralize it? They can make it on a blockchain that they have control of. Why would they give up control as a company? Uh, they, they, they could just keep th things going the way that they are I really I understand how blockchain could potentially impact the gaming industry. I'm struggling to see the financial incentive for all of the players to participate in it. And in case I'm potentially missing something, let me know down in the comments. But people have been missing Final Fantasy VI getting a remaster because they had a stupid remaster that happened a little while ago. People wanted the original game, just up all right? And that's what the Pixel remaster Final Fantasy VI is. We now have a launch date of February. It should be coming out sometime in February 2022, the most hotly the most hotly anticipated Final Fantasy Pixel remaster out there. And electric vehicles are hotly anticipated, but not if you're having some startup troubles. The EV startup Canoe, which is known for making these like little bubbly vans that people are all excited about, is experiencing some leadership transition. They're losing three of their top executives, including their CTO and two of their founders, in just a leadership shakeup that the company is saying that they need to have happen in order for them to move forward together. Obviously, you can't tell a whole lot about a company based on this one decision because you're not there for the internal meetings. But whenever there's this much like turnover in the higher executive level, this early on, it doesn't necessarily bode well for the future. And it's not boding well for TikTok's desktop streaming setup for them to be found out for violating licenses already. As it was mentioned in last week's episode of Hot News, TikTok is releasing its own desktop version of TikTok streaming so that you can actually stream from a camera or computer and you don't have to just do it on your phone. But in researching the software, it's found that there's some code in the actual application that might be violating some GPL licenses because it takes code from OBS Studio and just steals it, which OBS is responding that, hey, you should, you should talk to us about this because, you know, we can take you to court. 
over this. However, we'd like to deal with GPL violations in good faith, and we'd like to talk with you about it and potentially come to a resolution amicably, which hopefully is the case. And it's not, you know, TikTok just stealing everybody else's IP and just being like, what? That's all her whole platform. We steal everybody's music and then you dance. Why is OBS not dancing? And according to new reports that are coming out, Steve Ballmer, as he was dancing his way out of Microsoft, decided that instead of trying to get their smart assistant to be named Cortana, he wanted it to be named Bingo, according to interviews that are coming out, which, you know, we could debate whether or not Cortana is even a good assistant, whether or not anybody uses Cortana on their actual PCs. But I have to say, Bingo is a better name than Cortana. I don't give a crap, Halo fanboys. I, I have no attachment to the name Cortana. I didn't play Halo growing up. It means absolutely nothing to me. But if Microsoft is gonna commit with Bing for their search engine, having their smart assistant be named Bingo is just like the ultimate brain blast. That's the correct thing for them to do. And I'm sad that Steve Ballmer didn't get his way. And I'm sad that we don't have RDNA 2 based APUs out yet. Hopefully, that's gonna change with the Steam Deck, and hopefully, maybe, I don't know, Aya Neo might be changing that, because they have an announcement coming out on December 28th, in just under a week, where they're gonna be talking about their next generation portable console that's gonna have high performance AMD cores based on the next generation, which some speculation might be that it could be based on the upcoming Zen 3 Plus Rembrandt APUs that is supposed to be announced at CES by AMD, which would make this announcement about a week early and doesn't make a whole lot of sense, so it might actually the only be Zen 3, so it's like a Ryzen 7 5800U, in which case it would still be Vega based, which means that why would you buy the Aya Neo with Vega based graphics when you could get the freaking Steam Deck with RDNA 2 based graphics? I don't necessarily know, but I'm excited. I'm gonna hotly anticipate this announcement and I'll keep you updated as it happens. And I'm done updating you today because this episode of Hot News is over. Big thanks for you to watching this with your breakfast for me, with me. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>